about what's happening in Europe. Again, concerns uh, reigniting overnight about Thursday night's private sector involvement in terms of that Greek deal swap. Is that what it was about? And, and was it overdone at all, do you think, in terms of the sell-off today? I think the Greek uh, jitters are helping in that deadline at 9 p.m. Um, on the 8th of March. But really with the thing that's been playing out this week on global markets is concerns about global growth. First of all, we saw China coming out to drop its uh, growth forecast from 8% to 7.5%. Then overnight we saw that European contraction being confirmed for that fourth quarter with a contraction of 0.3%. 3%. And even, even emerging countries like Brazil are seeing growth of just 0.3% in the fourth quarter, taking 2011 growth to just 2.7%. So that compares to growth of 7.5%. And indeed, here domestically in Australia, we saw the same type of trend where we did see those fourth quarter numbers coming in much softer than what the market was expecting. And we only saw 0.4% growth here in Australia. So all up, those lower levels of growth impacting on those growth assets. Very very much a risk off environment but one of the heaviest falls was copper prices overnight down by two and a half percent so it wasn't surprising to see those growth areas like the material sector still being quite heavily hit today down by 1.9 percent in particular the higher beta companies being hit quite hard we saw Fortescue down almost four percent once again but it was the industrial sector which was hit the hardest today it was down by 2.1 percent we saw stocks like Brambles down by 3.7 percent NRW Holdings down by almost 7%. So altogether, the growth sectors of the market being hit and all over the globe, we have been getting weaker reads or weaker forecasts in terms of growth, and that's really being played out on the markets. And, of course, the Greek jitters over that uh, deadline, over the invitation to restructure, um, certainly not helping the market. Look for our market. A couple of, in, you know, pretty soft sort of negative days on the market yesterday. Some people saying, look, a bit of profit-taking and some consolidation after a relatively good run. I mean, do you see any relief, any respite in the, in the coming sessions, in the coming weeks, or do you expect us to sort of maintain this sort of lurching between 4,200, 4,300, indeed, maybe even 4,100? I mean, we've been so positive on the way up and then so negative on the way down, but essentially over the last six months, we've just been bouncing around mm. between 4,000 to about 4,400. So having a look at our market, and once again, we're still in that sideways pattern. So having a look at the last 60 days on our market, and this is what the ASX 200 looks like. So you can see that we're just going pr probably towards that bottom target there at 4,040 points, but it's a target we've seen a time and time again before. So it does look like the market really not seeing too many positive catalysts. We just came out of earnings season and we saw FY12 earnings being downgraded from about 7.5% to about 3.5% and FY13 earnings probably being adjusted as well. And then we're seeing global growth around the world looking a little bit soft. So once we price that into the market, probably uh, some more uh, more potential for positive catalysts in the second half of the year. But that was, that was what we were always looking at. We were always looking at the first quarter of 2012 still been quite a difficult one uh, if we have a look at Greece that's going to be important over the next couple of days and a lot of numbers going around at the moment if we do see a potential hard uh, default in Greece uh, what type of figures are going to be needed to support the rest of the countries with high levels of debt such as Spain Italy Portugal and so I guess the market concentrating on the next couple of days. But if we if we uh, if we pass the next couple of days, the Greek restructure happens. We see the Greek bailout happen. We've probably just kicked the can down the road and bought another couple of years uh, in terms of uh, in terms of dealing with the European issues. But this week was always going to be a big one in terms of the macro data coming out. And unfortunately, the macro data has been on the weaker side. The GDP numbers that we've been getting for the fourth quarter showing that we are seeing a slowdown. Uh, well, slower than expected growth here in Australia, in Brazil, and uh, confirming that contraction in the Eurozone. So, Julia, while I'm going back to what we were talking about a little bit before, in, in terms of, you know, investment strategies and very much a stock pickers market, it has been one uh, for now. Charles obviously sees this as a, an opportunity when you have these sorts of down days. What about you for your personal belief? I mean, do you see it as an opportunity and ongoing weaknesses potentially getting some good deals or you, you know, tend to stand on the sides a little bit? I think it's, a, it's difficult being in a 
uh, I think it's difficult stock picking in a market like this and that's because we are seeing assets moving up or moving down together so when we see these risk on risk off days we see risk being sold off altogether or risk um, being bought up altogether so in terms of stock picking it's hard when assets have such high correlation um, not only across equities but also across commodities and other risk assets as well so I think it is a little bit more about timing when the market's going up that buy and hold strategy works simply because the overall trend is positive um, and we've seen that as an extremely positive trend from 1980 all the way up to 2007 unfortunately when we are seeing asset price deterioration you can't just buy and hold stocks because you see huge asset deterioration over time and an extreme example is Japan where we saw the market peaking in 1989 and since then to the bottom of the market Japan's lost 80 percent in value in terms of its market but it's also seen some massive bear market rallies as well from 2003 to 2007 that was a market that rallied a massive 125 percent so it's really identifying those trends and really riding the wave of momentum especially in this type of market where we are still seeing extremely high correlations and risk assets tend to be moving up or down altogether